Welcome back to JSA TV Live, where we are covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders across the digital infrastructure industry. We are coming to you live from the show floor of Yada, day two. And joining me now, we have Jay Lawrence. He's the CEO of Equus Compute Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, glad to be here. Yeah. Well, everyone here at the show is talking, uh, obviously, a lot about AI, your, your bread and butter, too. So let's um, get into it with you guys. You know, AI obviously having a huge impact on the digital infrastructure industry. So as a systems and solutions provider, how is that driving what your customers are looking for? Well, it's interesting. You know, we actually, I spoke on a panel yesterday about densifying how we do compute. And one of the key things that AI is definitely doing, one, it's consuming a lot of power. So for folks to really deploy this stuff right now is, is creating a little bit of ache. But ache equals opportunity in the end which is a good thing, I think, if you do it right. So it's really presenting a lot of different deployment modalities. And if you look at where AI sits today, and every time I speak, I always pull up my smartphone and say, you know, why do we call this thing a phone? It's got like 300 apps on it, and the phone is like the least used one of all of them. Yeah, decline any yeah, call yeah, that yeah, comes just, in. Yeah, we don't want to talk to you, bye. You know, so, <laughs> but when you look at what's going on with AI, you, you have three flavors today. You know, it's, you got the machine learning stuff, you got the inferencing, which is the computer guessing, and then ultimately generative, but, if you take that phone metaphor for a second in terms of how people are actually putting this to work, there's going to be thousands of flavors of AI over the next couple of years. And that's going to create deployment problems. It's going to create proximity problems. And, you know, even, you know, when I was talking yesterday, one of the key things I've always said is you have to follow what's going on with the network because that really drives how the compute works. And 5G, which everyone thinks they have 5G, I challenge anyone turn your Wi-Fi off and do an OOPLA speed test, I guarantee you. You're not getting a gig to your device. It's not a millisecond of latency. And if you think you have 5G, you drive past an airport with the spectrum exclusions, you're going to get knocked off. So you're not going to get five nines availability. And by the way, there's only two things in life that are five nines, death and taxes. So when you kind of incorporate what's going on with the macro network, five going to 6G, and then all this new density that's happening with the compute, all the stress it's putting on the power grid, it really forces a complete rethinking of not just how you do it, but where you do it. Because, you know, latencies, it's all about proximity, right? So closer I am to you, the faster you're hearing the words that I'm saying, even though you don't notice it, but computers can. So it's it, it creates a lot of really good um, challenges. And like I said, we're gonna sit back here in two years and have a totally different conversation about things that are AI, but we don't even call them AI. Right, well, you were just talking about latency and proximity and, you know, just how important that is. So you have developed a, an innovative edge solution. Talk about that and, you know, just get into a little bit more about why that is so critical oh, right now. Oh, hundred percent. So, you know, we have three kind of key planks in our business. So one of them is focusing at edge compute. Again, follow the bouncing ball of the network. Yeah. Where is it going? Not where it's been, but where is, where is it going? And the most important thing that people need to understand about what 5G really did was it decentralized the central office which sounds like an oxymoron, but it's true. So all of a sudden, all the compute goes to the edge. So one of our key planks is accelerated computing at the edge. We, we had a great partnership with a group called Zscaler that's got a cybersecurity platform that we've now put into an edge compute that will ultimately become an accelerated edge compute and then ultimately become an accelerated liquid cooled edge computing platform because these devices are getting hotter and hotter. I talked about the power draw, right? That's a big deal. And you can save 40% of the power by putting these things under a liquid cooling type solution. But if you don't, and you look at the edge further, where, where's the power systems today? It's in cities. There aren't substations in farms. It, you know, a lot of times in schools and hospitals, they have a fixed amount of power. Getting more is hard. And you know, there's a bigger story there to tell, which will come, I think, right out into the open over the next couple of years. But if AI got all the juice it wanted right now, you and I wouldn't be having breakfast because they're just your toaster wouldn't work. Right. So you mentioned liquid cooling as well, and, and I know that ECS is a leader in liquid cooling, specifically a solution that reduces that energy consumption that, you know, that it's becoming such a big piece of the puzzle right now. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it's interesting. It's kind of a bit of a gold rush at the moment because everyone is saying, hey, this is where we have to go. And, you know, another kind of a obvious thing, you try to go to a car lot and buy a car that was built after 1975 that's not liquid cooled. I mean, even the Teslas have liquid cooling in them. So it's it's just the cars and the computers have now caught up with each other in terms of how you cool them. 
Um, that's not going to go away. And it, it's multifold. One of it, one part of the problem is, you know, these chips, you know, you go from like an H series NVIDIA GPU down to Blackwell's. So you go from like a 700 watt chip to a 1200 watt chip. We're going to be talking about 5,000 watt chips in two years. Fans just can't blow enough air across these things to matter. So it's, and, and when I say to matter, I mean, can the chip run full yeah. throttle right. before, you know, it kind of clips itself. But the other part of it's, it's economics. You know, if you're going to spend all that money trying to blow air over something that's not going to work in the first place, it's a waste of time. So we're really to that point now. And there's, there's not just one size fits all either. You, you know, right now we've got a direct to chip solution. We've got an immersion solution. We've got a rear door a solution. They all work in different ways and we can integrate them, you know, in some hybrid fashions to say, okay, what's the right tool for the job? What's the real problem that needs to get solved? Um, for example, you try to take an immersion system and just drop it into a traditional data center, you're gonna have a tough time, yeah. right? A lot of weight, all the plumbing upstairs, you know, the, the cable racks and power distribution, it's all made for an air cold rack. It costs a lot of money to retrofit, but direct the chip fits really neatly. You start going to the edge and go greenfield. Well, you know, immersion makes a lot of sense for more than just the cooling principles. It's not in a nice air controlled, nice comfy Equinex data center where everything is well protected. You could be in a dirty shed at the bottom of a cell tower as an example. So having something that's sealed, you don't get the dust bunnies and you get the extra power savings. And again, as you continue to go down and down the, the pipe of how all these things change as you follow the network. So again, 5G decentralizes the central office, the compute moves closer to the edge, the cores in the compute have to be closer to the person using the compute, and then you don't have power where you need the cores. Right. So all these things start to kind of compound in terms of how the solution uh, comes together. And that's an area we've spent a lot of time developing subject matter expertise so that our customers, when they come to us or our partners, we're actually bringing right tool for the job, not try to do square peg round hole and, you know, get to the thing where works can't cost extra. It just got to be the right solution. That's right. Keep people running and yep. keep them online. Yep. That's yep. what you got to do no matter where they are because yeah. we need the service. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, and it's only going to get worse. Right. Nobody's going to consume less. If you try to take someone's phone away from them today, good luck. We're not going back to <laughs> pagers, people. It's not happening. No way. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Always enjoy hearing from you guys and we look forward to seeing uh, what you got going on and having you back here on JSA TV. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Stick around. We've got a lot more to come here live from the show floor of Yada. In the meantime, stay curious and stay connected.